So let's take an illustrative example of the Haddon matrix and its utility. We'll use a pedestrian injury example here. And by way of illustration, we will go across each row. Now, very importantly, the Haddon matrix looks like a grid with four columns and three rows. The four columns, left to right respectively, are human factors. In other words, human-related factors that come into play before, during, and after an event, respectively. The next column to the right of that is agent or vehicle. This is the injury, or in some cases, illness-causing agent. And the various rows reflect how that agent plays out before, during, and after an event. In other words, pre-event, event, and post-event. Moving left to right, continuing. The physical environment column reflects the physical infrastructure and how that respectively plays out before, during, and after an injury or illness-causing event. And last but not least, the far right column is the sociocultural environment column. And as per the approach of the Haddon matrix, the various cells underneath it reflect how the sociocultural environment plays out in pre-event, event, and post-event phases, respectively. So let's, with that as a backdrop, take a tour, if you will, of this pedestrian injury example. So think of someone crossing the street uh, in a busy urban or suburban or rural environment, perhaps, and that person is struck by a car. So let's look at the pre-event row. So in the pre-event row, human factors, and by the way, for this slide, we've intentionally just indicated one factor for each cell. In theory and in practice, one would want to think of all the possible human factors for each phase of the event, and the same for the other columns. But for simplicity, we're just having one item per cell. So before the moment of impact, pre-event phase, a human factor could be an intoxicated pedestrian. Again, still on the pre-event row, uh, before the moment of impact, the agent or vehicle factor could be a speeding vehicle. Adjacent to that to the right, the physical environmental factor could be an intersection with poor lighting. And directly adjacent to that to the right, a sociocultural pre-event factor before the moment of impact could be low rate of enforcement of yield laws. So let's now go to the next row, which is the event phase row. This reflects the moment of impact as alluded to earlier, and the minutes to even slightly longer following that event. So a human factor, example, in the event phase could be osteoporosis in an elderly pedestrian. Why is that important? Because that could affect the acute bone injury incurred by perhaps a pedestrian with low bone density. Under the agent or vehicle column, on the event phase row, the front end profile of the car could be relevant, depending on the height of the front end profile of the car versus the height of the struck pedestrian. That could result in different patterns of acute injury. Under the physical environmental column in the event phase row, we're looking at, for example, road surface characteristics. Is it icy? Are there potholes or other characteristics that could be relevant at the moment of impact in terms of road surfaces? And lastly, in the event phase row, under sociocultural environment, speed limits could be a sociocultural environmental factor. So are the speed limits perhaps higher than they should be? Are they ignored or otherwise? And so these kinds of considerations literally can impact the event. Now let's talk about post-event factors. And this is the last row, bottom row of the table. So human post-event factors could be an elderly pedestrian. For example, an elderly pedestrian who may have pre-existing comorbidities or underlying illness could take longer to convalesce following a pedestrian injury accident than someone who does not have pre-existing underlying health conditions, for example. Under the agent or vehicle column for post-event, a crash investigation with vehicle inspection is an important post-event action to identify what contributed to this pedestrian injury event. Again, under the post-event row, looking at the physical and environmental column, the distance to the nearest trauma care facility. There's a term in emergency medicine called the golden hour, which loosely refers to how much time one has to take life-saving measures in a traumatic injury or related event. 
And so the distance to the nearest trauma care facility is a physical environmental factor that very much matters in terms of ability to save lives following such an event. And the sociocultural environmental column for post-event comprises, for example, regionalized trauma care. Are there systems in place, for example, to transport people by helicopter, for example, following an event? And that would be a sociocultural environment that may relate to policy or programmatic aspects of the jurisdiction where the event occurs. Now let's talk about the utility of the Haddon Matrix with regard to planning. There's an old axiom that proper planning prevents poor performance. And when we think about the Haddon Matrix, the Haddon Matrix's utility, among many, is to identify a menu of strategies that could be selected from to yield the greatest public health benefit to the problem at hand. As I mentioned in the previous slide, we want to think of as many possible items within each cell that could be considered as the basis for intervention for a given public health problem. So that's indicated in number two on this clockwise diagram. And from that menu of options, we would want to choose those strategies that are deemed by a team of experts. And by the way, a Haddon matrix is ideal for group brainstorming with people with different areas of expertise. So we'd, we could choose from among those identified strategies to identify the optimal ones for achieving the desired public health goal. I mentioned proper planning prevents poor performance. Well, this is true very much of disaster planning as well. So when we talk about disaster planning, a term that is often used, and rightly so, is the all hazards approach, which means that we need to think about systems and approaches like the Haddon matrix that are flexible and can be adapted for different types of emergent public health threats, whether we're talking about terrorism preparedness or natural disasters such as hurricanes and others, or pandemics, whether it's COVID-19 or influenza pandemics. And because planning is paramount to success, we need to maximize our limited resources. We always have fewer resources than we wish we had in disaster response. We also have fewer resources always. And this also applies to disaster recovery, where the post-event phase maps onto disaster recovery, where we don't have as many resources as we'd like for disaster recovery. So we have to maximize those resources. The Haddon Matrix allows us to strategically plan in order also to reduce inefficiency and to prepare for a broad range of challenges across the all-hazards continuum that I mentioned. The Haddon Matrix has some specific advantages that are listed here. It's systematic, and planning for disasters requires a systematic approach to unpack and parcel out a complex event into its constituent contributing elements. Now, as an important caveat to this, it is systematic, but it is, like any tool, subject to interuser variability. That's why the Haddon Matrix really should be created and populated by a team of experts from different areas of public health perspectives. Also, the Haddon Matrix has an advantage in that it can address different aspects of the disaster life cycle. In another pocket map presentation, we described the disaster life cycle referring to prevention and mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. So the Haddon Matrix maps on to those various phases respectively because prevention and preparedness align with the pre-event row, response aligns with the event row, and recovery aligns with the post-event row of the Haddon Matrix. In addition to helping parcel out complex scenarios, and disasters are always complex events, into more manageable segments, the Haddon Matrix can help us, as I alluded to earlier, identify strategy of greatest feasibility or influence. And those findings must be translated into policy and practice to achieve the desired effects. Very importantly, the Haddon Matrix is also scalable. What do I mean by that? It's scalable for different levels of planning. It can be used at the national level, the regional level, the state level, the local level, in industry or occupational setting, or other institutional setting. It can even be used at the international level. A couple of key caveats to build upon some earlier comments is that the Haddon Matrix is most effective when planning is done for all phases in advance of the event. This may seem counterintuitive, but it's very important to keep in mind. In other words, we should not wait for an event such as a radiological dirty bomb to, God forbid, play out before filling out all the cells of the Haddon Matrix completely. We can always modify our Haddon Matrix after or as we learn more details about the event at hand, but it's important to do 
planning for pre-event, event, and post-event phases even before a disaster has occurred. The contents of the matrix also, as a caveat, may differ depending on subject matter experts, degree of expertise, and the diligence of users to complete the respective cells in a thorough and detailed manner. This slide just presents a screenshot of the pre-event phase of the Haddon matrix. And as you can see, the scenario that is being described here is for uh, pandemic influenza. What you'll also notice on this slide is that anything in bold indicates things that can be most addressed through public health intervention. An important take home also from this slide, and this is true in general of the Haddon matrix, is that the least modifiable column of the Haddon matrix is the agent or vector column. In other words, there's not a whole lot that we can do of a given strain of avian flu, but there are a lot of things that we can do within the various columns surrounding or adjacent to the agent and vector column, such as human factors, things we can do within the human factors column pre-event, things we can do within the physical and environmental column pre-event, and the sociocultural environmental column pre-event. So this is an important aspect to keep in mind of developing the Haddon matrix.